Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Previously in this channel, we had discussed about one of a benign tumor in the brain called as meningioma. But brain is not the only place where these meningiomas are seen and they can also be seen in the spine. So in this video, let us look at it in detail. That is what are spinal meningiomas? What are the problems they cause? How do we treat it? And what happens after the treatment? Do make sure you watch this video till the end so that you get this complete information in simple words. Human nervous system can be divided into brain, spinal cord and nerves. Nerves can be peripheral nerves and cranial nerves. While the brain and spinal cord together constitute what is called as central nervous system, cranial nerves and peripheral nerves constitute what is called as a peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is typical in a way that it has a covering around it. I mean to say brain and spinal cord have a covering around it called as pyometer, arachnoid mater and dura mater. These meningiomas arise from the coverings of these and hence these meningiomas are seen in the central nervous system that is brain or spinal cord and not usually in the peripheral nervous system. While there is slight bit of exception that is one of the cranial nerve, optic nerve is uh, sort of can be considered as a part of central nervous system because it is considered as extension of the brain. It has coverings like any other part of the central nervous system and hence meningiomas can be seen around optic nerve too. Let's now talk about some numbers. While if you consider all the tumors that arise around the spinal cord, Meningiomas constitute roughly about 25% of them. And if you just look at meningiomas, then more than 80 to 85% are seen in the brain and around 15% are seen in the spine. The spinal meningiomas are usually slightly more common in males compared to females, contrary to the cranial meningioma, which is slightly more common in females. It is usually seen in the age group of 40 to 60 years, of course, there can be exceptions. So the spine, as you may be aware, can be divided into cervical, thoracic, lumbar and sacral segments. These spinal meningiomas are most commonly seen in the thoracic segment with about 80% of them. And around 15% are seen in the cervical segment and less than 5% are seen in the lumbar segment. So as I told you, the spinal cord has the covering around it. So the exact location of the meningioma is what is called as intradural extramedullary. What do I mean by this? So this means that the meningioma is located inside the covering of the spine, the covering called as the dura mater, but it is outside the tissue of the spinal cord itself. So basically it's not arising from the spinal cord tissue itself, it's arising from the covering around it. So that is why it is called as intradural extramedullary. Microscopically, there are different types of meningiomas, while these three are commonly encountered in the spine. While in case of brain, if you remember, we spoke about some so-called high-grade meningiomas, which are slightly towards what can be called as malignant, like atypical meningioma, and these are extremely rare in the spine. Now let us see what problems do they cause actually, or in other words, what the patient comes to us with when he has a spinal meningioma. So these spinal meningiomas are usually very slowly growing tumors. Hence, almost all the symptoms are very, very, very gradually progressing and nothing actually happens overnight. So the patient may have a chronic dull aching pain in the back for many months to years. And for the same reason, we say even though back pain is very common, but if somebody has a very chronic, long-lasting pain, it's better to get it evaluated. Just do a MRI scan and so that, you know, something major can be ruled out. So coming back to the topic, patients can have a chronic dull aching pain in the back before any other major symptoms begin. On the other side, they may not have any pain as well. So what do I mean by before other major symptoms begin? That means what are the other major symptoms that can start? Now, as I told you, the main problem is it is arising from the covering of the spinal cord and it starts pressing on the spinal cord. So as the tumor grows bigger and bigger, it starts pressing on the spinal cord, goes on pressing it more and more 
as a result of which the spinal cord will not be able to carry out its function normally. So what happens as a result of that? The patient will start having weakness of the limbs. Usually these meningiomas arise from one side of the spinal cord. Hence, usually the weakness starts on one of the limb and then gradually as the size increases, it may involve both the limbs. Along with causing weakness, the patient will also have decreased sensation in the body. It could be for touch, pain, temperature, whatever it is. But these usually happen because the spinal cord is unable to carry these sensory signals all the way till the brain. So, as time progresses, patient will also start having problem in urination and defecation. A very important thing to note here is that all these symptoms will continue to progress. They will not halt or reverse unless the meningioma is removed. So, when a patient comes to us with these symptoms, obviously we suspect that something is wrong in the spinal cord and we ask for an MRI scan. In the MRI scan, we see a tumor sitting over there pressing on the spinal cord to variable extent. While in this case, the diagnosis and treatment is pretty straightforward. There is only one way to treat it that is operate and remove that tumor. So what do we do exactly in the operation? We do a small opening in the bone called as laminectomy. We open the covering of the spinal cord that is dura mater find the tumor and slowly and carefully remove that tumor using usually using an instrument called as fusa taking all the precautions all the safety that no spinal cord is damaged so once this tumor is fully removed and the wound is closed back patient is shifted to the post-op ward and then to the ward usually he or she is discharged in two to four days of course it depends on few factors with the modern day set of neurosurgical equipments, the safety of spinal meningioma surgery has significantly improved. When I say modern day equipments, I'm talking about microscope, drill, QSA, neuro navigation, neuro monitoring, etc. How much does spinal meningioma operation cost? Of course, it depends on multiple factors. Most important being where you are getting this operation done. Is it in a government hospital? Is it in a medical college that is an institution? Or is it in a private or corporate hospital? Of course, it will also depend on the city where you are getting it operated. Obviously, bigger the city, higher the cost. But on an average, in a private hospital, I would say it will cost somewhere between 2 to 4 lakhs. Of course, it is lesser in a government hospital. It may be less than 50,000 or it may even be free in case of some scheme patients. But in a private corporate hospital, it's going to cost you somewhere between 2 to 4 lakhs. Why is the cost so much? I mean, if you consider this cost as high, let me tell you a few points why this cost uh, may be high. Uh, there is a reason for it because uh, the operation requires few specialized equipments like a high speed drill, an operating microscope, uh, an instrument called as QSAR to remove this tumor or sometimes neuro um, monitoring, etc. So obviously these things come with some cost and the hospital has to get it from the patient itself. So these operations uh, can be slightly towards the costlier side, but usage of these equipments will only increase the safety of the operation and uh, overall it is going to benefit the patient himself. So what happens after spinal meningioma operation? As I told previously, here the problem is external compression on the spinal cord that is the tumor is not arising from the spinal cord matter itself it's arising from its covering and it's pressing on the spinal cord so once this external compression is removed the spinal cord usually begins its functioning back most of the patients get a very good recovery up to about 90 percent or even more with time if you ask me, can't there be any complication? Yes, of course, there can be complications. There can be no surgery without the possibility of complications. So what are the complications that we may expect in spinal meningioma surgery? One is during an operation, inevitable injury to the spinal cord. This can happen sometimes. After the operation, there can be leak of fluid around the spinal cord. That is CSF. 
there can be wound infection there can be chronic pain etc but a very important thing that uh, we are looking at is on long term sometimes there can be recurrence of the tumor that is the tumor may regrow back this usually happens if there is some amount of residual tumor left behind that is if it is not excised completely because of some or the other inevitable reasons and for the same reason patient needs to be on follow up and needs to undergo mri scans on frequent intervals so that any amount of recurrence can be picked up very early so these were a few points about spinal meningiomas i hope uh, the video was informative uh, if so make sure you give it a thumbs up so that the youtube baba becomes happy and uh, for more such informative videos subscribe to this channel thank you for watching